Alberta National Champions of 2008 continues here at the arena in San Juan. And what promises to be another explosive matchup here in the Elite Eight is about to get underway. My name is Magu Marjan, together with one of the greatest basketball minds in the Grunty today, Coach Ronnie Maxano. Well, from the Sweet 16 to the Elite Eight, these two teams are dreaming of making it to the Final Four for a chance to have a date with the Ateneo Blue Eagles who are safely inside the semifinals. It is going to be the Ledron Knights taking on the FEU Tamaras, another NCAA UAAP <laughs> matchup. And uh, let's get right into the meat of it, Coach. Uh, here in our KFC pregame discussion, let's take a look at how everything has shaped up to get here to the Elite Eight. Divided into two brackets, 16 teams belonging to Group X and Group Y to your left side of off your, off your space, Ateneo safely inside the final four, and the winner here between FU and Letran will be meeting Ateneo in the semifinals. To your right side, of course, San Beda and Arellano will meet later on for a chance to meet De La Salle also in the final four from 16 teams to the Elite Eight. Now we will be looking at the final four in the next few hours. So two teams are already in the final four, like what coach said. We need two more, one of them will come from this matchup at hand. Let's take a look at how these guys got to the Elite Eight, starting with Letran's road from the Sweet 16 to the Elite Eight. They finished in the third spot in the NCAA, so they had to go to the zonal elimination. And they were in the, uh, let's see this, the category of the Mindanao, the, the Visayas zonals. Of course, in this particular game against the team of San Sebastian Baycats, Coach Egar Makaraya tried to keep this game close, but eventually the vast championship experience and court savvy of Dino Da and RJ Azul were the biggest difference in that ball game. Five players in double digits. It was cruise control for Letran. They haven't been to the Sweet 16 in a long while. Any NCAA team hasn't won a title here in the Collegiate Championships. And that's the fervent hope of Letran to finish that drought and to get the title for an NCAA squad. On the other side of the ball, coach, the FEU Tamaras took on the JRU Heavy Bombers in the Sweet 16. What happened in that ball game? It was a closer game between JRU and, of course, the team of uh, FEU. But coach Glenn Capascio just flexed enough muscle to get that victory over JRU 84-75 last November 29. And the two-time National Collegiate Champions FEU trying to get back into their winning groove. In the last three years, they haven't made it to the finals. And third-year coach Glenn Capascio is just hoping against hope that fatigue will not be a problem and that the motivation of being champions here will once again propel this young elite of the Tamaraus to the final four in a date with arch rivals Atene. Coach Ronnie, an interesting note here. Both teams were almost identical in sharing the wealth. Let's talk about that. how they did back in the Sweet 16. It's always a saying that teamwork makes the dream work. And coaches Glenn Capascio and coach Louis Alas, they know for a fact that in sharing the basketball, good things are bound to happen. And look at the numbers. FEU, 21 big assists versus JRU. Colleagues, the San Juan de Letran, same numbers. A lot of players with at least one assist and at least six players with six points. And that's the reason why they made it to the next level. But sadly, only one team here today between these two excellent squads will move on to the Final Four. Coach Ronnie, now it's time to turn it over to our third man in the, pa in the panel who definitely looks better than both <laughs> of us combined. Let's turn it over to Sharon Yu. Looks better than you guys, maybe. <laughs> Anyways, you know, FAU started their pregame huddle an hour earlier to get a lowdown of all their plays. Now, on their offense, the coaches asked for more assists emphasizing their 21 assists during the last game and also to set good screens at the right timing. Now, the coaches ended on a high note by saying, Mga pare, wag natin lalukoy ng letran. Isa sila sa mga teams na kaya makimatch up sa atin in terms of speed, in terms of athleticism. As all the boys stood up, clapped their hands, and dribbled their basketballs ready to go and fight. Now, let's move over to the letran Knights. You know, this team, they didn't spend their pregame at the dugout. Rather, they spent it on the court practicing their shooting as Coach Louie went up to them, gathered them in a circle and said, Mga pare, ialay natin ang laban natin sa ating mga relatives sa ating school. Ibang klaseng achievement to kung kumakaabot tayo sa finals. And it looks like that's enough encouragement for them to get fueled up in today's match, guys. Thank you so much, Sharon Yu. It is going to be the FEU Tamaros taking on the Ledra Knights. Two Perino powerhouses here in the collegiate ranks. Action will be underway in just a few moments. Do join us back.
Back with us here at the arena in San Juan, moments away from tip off. Elite Eight action looking for the next final four participant, Coach Ronnie. Here are the starting lineups for both teams. You are uh, really going to see a uh, slam bang affair right at the first quarter. Of course, both coaches trying to establish the right kind of attitude for their respective squads, just trying to make sure that they get the advantage early on in this ball game. The Tamaraos in green while the Knights are in white. The green shirts of FEU winning the tip. Fernandez on the opening drive going right away to Barroca. This is going to be one electric matchup. Barroca against Melegrito. Barroca gets a, the first basket of this game. With these two point guards led their team in pushing the respective schools to the fine to the elite eight and uh, you can be sure that once again these two point guards will try to outsmart each other in this marquee matchup between Barroca and Kojak Melegrito. So Barroca draws first but Melegrito answers <laughs> right back with a three. What you can do I can do better. Now they have put in the earliest points for their respective squads. Expect these two players now to try and defend against each other because really their offense flows through their hands for the entire ball game. Coach Ronnie, early on the pressure defense that did JRU in in the Sweet 16 is or, uh, for the Letran Knights. Uh, they are applying it on the FEU Tamaras a dose of their own medicine. Yes, they forced 39 turnovers against the San Sebastian Vegas for today. That is uh, typical of a Coach Louis Alas basketball squad forcing turnovers deploying the traffic defense and today especially against FDU wherein a single loss eliminates you this kind of defense will be uh, just thrown by coach Velas real the final buzzer real Cervantes fishes a foul on his first attempt of course we would like to thank smart telecommunications and KFC for making this coverage possible as Cervantes will knock in his first free throw the challenge right now for these young players is how to play at an optimum level, especially since most of these players are playing also in the Philippine Basketball League. We saw several players just uh, play last night. In fact, Benedict Fernandez was named as the player of the game playing for Harbor Center yesterday. Talk about the, the fatigue factor these young kids have to go through. Iba yung sa veterans, iba yung sa ganitong bata. <laughs> pa, paano ba yung um, kalalaro mo lang kagabi? Ngayon, nandito ka na naman. Parang isang ligo lang, baliwala na eh. Tinanong ko kanina si Andy Baroka. Sabi ko, pagod ka ba? Sabi, hindi coach. Hindi coach, okay lang, ready ako to play. So that means that is the kind of uh, attitude that they bring. That's why they want to move on to the next level. But for them to do that, they have to show that they are the best among the best schools in the Philippines. Melegrito. Over to Ranises. As FEU has extended her defense, Melegrito trying to go for back to back threes. Misses on that attempt. Don Call tracks down that offensive rebound. Kicks it back out wisely. Resets the attack. But Da has other things in mind. Launches a three. Bang for Dino Da. Big time players come out in big games right now. The veterans quickly trying to establish their game. But they are going to be major contributors in this uh, elimination battle that run on top by three. Six against three. Now FU needs to break the press and go to their after execution. Barroca in trouble. Finds Adolfo. Forward pass over to Baracael. Baracael has not taken an attempt in this ball game. And Cervantes uh, sets up the attack from top of the key. Seven seconds on this FEU shot clock. Fernandez launches, misses. He gets his own rebound, but is in trouble. Gets the ball tapped away from him, but he safely gets it over to Adolfo. Cervantes in the lane, hacked by Ranises. <laughs> and Cervantes will have to earn it from the line. He split his earlier charity, so let's see how he does this time around. Well, that defensive uh, stop there. Of course, he smiled in the face of Coach Glenn Capasso. He is anticipating a very rugged type of a ball game here. Two coaches who put a lot of premium on rugged defense. Coaches who put a lot of premium on no aggressive play. That's why they are among the best in their respective leagues. Coach Rani, we've noticed uh, two different battle plans here in the opening minutes of this game. FU wanting to pound the ball inside while Letron wanting to open up uh, that FU defense by taking outside shots. Sometimes you have to take what the defense gives you. 
right now that Hunt pressing, forcing FPU just attack that press, go inside and score an easy basket for, for FPU. I think they realize that the run has a taller front line. Now they want to take away those interior shots, but the run has to extend their offense all the way out to three point area and try to open up the interior by hitting their outside shots. Two for two for Cervantes this time around, cutting this LeBron lead to one. Ramises! Finds a friend inside, but is blocked by Cervantes. Here comes Barroca. Trying to push that ball for the green shirts of FBU. Barroca against Melegrito. We are going to be watching this matchup all day long, but help defense forces Barroca to lose the ball. Barakael is there to clear it for the Tamaras. Five seconds on the shot clock. Barakael trying to spin his way to the hoop is fouled. Maybe undersized in the part of the ball spot, but his quickness enables it also to have the advantage when going for the offensive attacks. He is small, but he is a high leaper. He can play that power forward position, and that's the reason why Coach Ken Tomasho has matched him up against the bigger Caponce to try and attack the defense of the people going inside. Parakael, what a year this guy has been having. What a story, what a comeback. One for the box, Coach. You talk about drama, you talk about color, and Parakael really brought that to the it was almost another storybook affair for the Tamaras, but they just couldn't get past the Dallas Alvin Archers in the last game season. But the main story holds for Marcel. He was able to make a comeback, and right now he is showing the potential that people really forecasted for him. And sky's the limit for Mac Barakel. And Barakel ties this ball game up at six apiece with his split charities. Early adjustment on the part of Coach Louis Alas, uh, sending in Gutilban into this game. As the ball will sail out of bounds, and it will go to FEU, but the referees, do they change their minds? The referee approaches the table, officials. <laughs> mm, a warning slapped on the assistant coach of the Lentron Knights. Yes, less than four minutes gone here in the first quarter. Akala mo, nasa third period na tayo, kung makita mo yung kiss-kiss and dito. At talagang uh, hawakan sa loob between the green and yellow and the white, blue and red. Parang ayal is stripped by Melegrito. Here comes Kojak, two on one, takes it all the way to the hole, and he picks up a foul in the process. Kojak Melegrito, I think, is playing the best basketball so far for the run. The many years that he has played for the Knights. And Coach Luis Alas has developed a battery of point guards in the many years that he has handled the run as well. Talk about guys such as Boyan Bautista. And I think this fellow follows in the footsteps of the Boyan Bautista. Beautiful look at that KFC slow-mo. Melegrito almost with a breakaway. Chased down and is fouled. Now it's time for our flying V free throw. And Melegrito completes that three-point play. 9-6 to six is the score. Lebron up by three, 6.35 remaining in this opening quarter. This is your 2008 Philippine Collegiate Championships. This is the Elite Eight. Do join us back. Action continues here at the San Juan Arena. Magu Marjan together with Coach Ronnie Magsano, wherein Coach Jack Melegrindo has now given the Lentra Knights a three-point lead, 9-6. He has scored already six quick points here in quarter number one. A three-point basket coupled with a layup and a free throw. And Lebron continues on with that pressure defense, but it is broken by the Tamaros. Adolfo taking his front and all is whistled for the offensive foul. Well, at the top of the coverage, you mentioned the sharing of wealth. And Adolfo, being a veteran, should realize that when the feeling is open, then that pass should be given. Especially against a trapping defense that Lebron has thrown at them from the get-go of this ballgame. Now, FEU with their own version of the trap as Notel will check into this ballgame for Adolfo. So both teams... Uh, Extending <laughs> their defense full court. It's going to be like watching a ping pong match going left and right here. Coach Ronnie, but Cervantes gets the steal as we take a look at the field goal so far in this opening quarter. Nutel in trouble against two. A foul is whistled on Gutelban using his knees to keep Nutel on the ground. Both teams putting in two small but quick guards. Coach Glenn Capasso adjusting by taking out 
his keeper Marlon Adolfo putting in a spin fire yes to tell to try and compliment Baroka in the backcourt and also take away those uh, unforced turnovers that they have committed here in quarter number one that allowed the Tran some layups enabled the Tran to post a three-point lead cut into two points by Jens Tutel first three. The problem is Letran now find themselves in the penalty, not even halfway through, not even four minutes into this ball game. Tutel makes him pay very smooth free throws. The lead of Letran still at one. Ta'a from attacks the baseline, loses that letter, Cervantes snaps it over to Fernandez. Ball is still loose, Cervantes picks it up, tapped away by Dino Da'a. What rough and tumble action we're seeing here. Electric atmosphere we can witness here. Every possession is golden. Every loose ball is contested. Even with still about uh, 5 minutes and 53 left here in the first quarter. Maroka spins into the front court. Maracayel now against Ranises. FEU swinging the ball to Fernandez for the three. That comes up short because there is a foul. And in this type of a knockout game, the pressure has escalated already. And you can see that the players are feeling it. Now, the team that is able to handle their emotions much better and channel those emotions into positive play will have the upper hand. Tita po, sense of urgency, napakataas eh. Nakakabago niya ang ganitong klase, yung tikada ng mga players sa panimula pa lang ng quarter. Fernandez knocks in the first free throw. And that ties this ball game up. Uh, he's got a second one coming to try and take the lead for FEU. And because that was a three-point event, three shots are awarded to him, and uh, Fernandez uh, delivering the goods so far. The number one three-point shooter in the last play, AP season. I like his uh, hairstyle, the anime look. Parang nasa South Express, 180 kilometers per hour. Partida, naka-handbrake. Mahangin yun. As there is an over and back violation, Ranis is trying to save that ball, but to the wrong side of the court. Uh, as we turn it over to courtside with this Sharon Yu. During the last one now, the Tamaras greeted each other by saying, Kumiris kayo, and what a sight to see. Coach Glenn Capasha was so red in anger, but his instructions were simple. And I quote, Ang letran, physical maglaro. Pero tayo, bakit tayo nag one on one Less isolation plays for Coach Glenn as he believes that's the cause of our turnovers. All we gotta do is move the ball around, guys. Coach Ronnie, your thoughts on that? Well, right now, Coach Glenn Capasha was able to make his necessary adjustments. They were able to make a comeback. Now they have the lead. Coach Luella has turned to call Cisfar and we assess their press break and handle the trapping defense of FEU. These two teams battling toe-to-toe -to -toe so far in this ballgame. Coach Rani, fearless forecast, do you even expect or do, can you even predict one of these teams breaking away? I don't think so. Especially these two teams are among the, the, the elite here in the Philippines and they know what is at stake. Additional motivation is being able to meet the best teams in the Final Four and the chance to represent the Philippines in Belgrade, Serbia if they make it all the way to the top. Of course, the finals will be played this coming Monday yes. at the Big Dome, the Araneta Coliseum, the Mecca of Philippine sports. Whatever team you're rooting for, that is one day in a sports fan's life, as most especially a basketball fan's life that you could not afford to miss. Definitely. Of course, Ateneo safely in the final four in the other bracket, while for La Salle, they're also inside the semifinals, awaiting the winner of, uh, let's see, San Beda and Arellano later on this day. I am a coach, but young La Salle, indeed, safely. Not safely, safely, safely. 11 to 9 is the score. <laughs> FEU with a two point lead. Cervantes over to Nutel on the give and go. Nutel gets that scoop layup. It's always nice to score coming off a timeout. Now let runs defense. White Portos at this stage of the ballgame. FEU here with a 6 to nothing run. And this now is the biggest lead for the FEU. Domino stands at four. Ball sails out of bounds. Will stay with the Knights. Of course, basketball is a game of putting that ball in the hoop. But right now, you're counting the defensive stops that we are seeing between these two schools. Yung commitment nila to play defense, napakataas talaga. Hindi sila basta-basta napapagod sa kanilang ginagawang exertion from the back out all the way to the front court. And it has definitely extended this ballgame. We are just about halfway into the <laughs> opening quarter. Knockout play, Gutelban. And at the baseline is hacked by Barroca. 
Mark Moroga is whistled for that personal foul. Very important for Barroca to nurse his fouls wisely because of his hustle pace. He has the tendency to really commit a lot of fouls. As Dino Dana knocks in his second triple in this ball game. That cuts the Knights' lead to 113-12. Fernandez breaks that defense, sidestep, scoops it over to Fernandez, and that is the sharing of the wealth you've been talking about, Gojani. Exactly. You talk about experience, you talk about unselfishness, and Fernandez has typified what prototype player coach Ben Capasho wants for the FU Damaraos. Back to a three-point lead for the Damaraos. Cabonce. Finding Ranices is stripped by Barroca from behind. And that is the value of a Mark Barroca, not just on the offensive end and leading the team. He leads him in defense just as well. Nutel now has shifted to the point guard spot. Bounces it down low. Cervantes back to the basket basketball. Cervantes spins. Teardrop. No good. Barroca trying to keep it alive. But Ranices collars the board for the white shirts. Azul. A mythical team member in the NCAA on the floor for the first time. Scoops it over for another three ball. That is good to bond for the basket. And now it's the turn of the trap to employ a six to nothing surge. Five three point shots in the ball game. Let me uh, see. Let's see, four three-pointers in the ballgame for Letran. 12 out of the 15 points coming from the long court. Gutelban, another breakaway is blocked! Erased by Fernandez, so we remain at the fifth depth oh. of this game, 15 all. Pass too high, even for Coach Louis Alas. We'll take a close count of the turnover tally in a short while. Also take a look at the assist battle between Letran and FU, but right now, one team really, really slugging it out, not wanting to fall behind by a big margin. And that beautiful dish brought to you, that is our KFC delivery assist of the quarter. 887-8888 is the digits to dial. KFC definitely finger licking good. And coach, not just the turnovers, not just the pressure, or because of the turnovers and the pressure defense rather, both coaches, palasa na palasa na tao dito. It's because of the tra trapping defense that they need to ensure that fresh, fresh legs will always be available. Pero alam mo, Magu, right now, I'm sure Coach Glenn Capasho is thinking of ways and means how to defend the three-point line. Etran is hurting them by hitting uncontested three-point shots. Right now, that has to be a major adjustment on the part of FU's defense. Guevara and Cortez on the floor for the white shirts. Azul trying to go one-on-one -on -one against Barroca. Misses on that jumper. Rebound collared <laughs> by Aldrich Ramos. Grabe yung kiss dito sa ilalim. Nutel trying to leave it over. That wasn't intended for Coach Luis Alas. That was for Kawali. Another turnover, Coach Ramos. Yes. These two squads need to realize that even if there's so much at stake, they have to be disciplined and stay within their game plans. I'm sure that uh, that will be what Coach Luis and Coach Glenn Capasha will be emphasizing during the course of the game. Play relaxed, play composed, just stay honest with the game plan that we have for today. The fly, high, the high flying, Guevara rather, forks it over to Hazul and that is three-pointer number five for the White Shirts of Letra. 15 out of the 18 goal points coming from the long court. We pointed that out a short while ago. That has to be defended by FEU. They have to step on the blue line. They have to force Letra to shoot farther away from the basket. Cervantes in trouble against Da'a. Da'a reaches in for that foul. And because of the outside shooting of Letran, they have retaken the lead 18-15, to 15, just under two and a half remaining in this opening quarter. And with the way F.E. was defended really uh, decently from the backcourt to the frontcourt, it's a mystery how Letran is able to find the shooters amidst the very efficient on-the-ball pressure thrown here by FBU. Kaya, kung ikaw si Coach Glenn, sasabihin mo ba, do you switch the handoffs? Do you fight over the pick and rolls? Well, whatever it is, you have to take away those open looks coming from Letran. Real Cervantes knocks in his first uh, flying V free throw. He is 4 of 5 so far from the line in this ball game. Real Cervantes was the best player of the game in that Sweet 16 matchup against JRU. Letron not wanting him to get his rhythm underneath, but the problem is they keep fouling him and he's now 5 of 6 from the line. He has really improved leaps and bounds, his ability to play back to the basket. But more importantly, he is a big guy who can run the floor, catch 8 to 10 rebounds, and now he can hit his free throws 
and now he plays with a lot of defensive muscle. So a complete package Ralph Cervantes is for Coach Glenn Capasho. And Cervantes uh, was partly responsible or mostly responsible for shutting down James Senna in that Sweet 16 matchup. That's not a tall, that is a very tall order yes. rather. As FBU gets the leather once again, Barroca switches to the left hand for a beautiful finish. He wanted that basket, but the run not quick enough to offer help side there. Deep in Taka Fair, FBU into driver's seat by a solitary point, 19 against 18. As Lutellus whistled for the foul as Barroca tried to create space. Taking a look at that KFC replay, going to the right, to the left for Mark Barroca. Sweet finish for the Tamarao. Husay ng bata, no? Mm -hmm. From the University of Zamboanga has really attracted a lot of basketball experts. And uh, people are saying that he is the next most important small man in Philippine amateur basketball. And what pressure is this guy is under? He is definitely under a microscope playing for the FAU Tamaras who has produced point guards such as Johnny Abarientos na hula ma Oo, ano ba? Magkakalat Tetok Miranda lang po ang sumula And now, itong si Villanueva, no? Jonas Villanueva starting to make waves in the Pro League Wala chicken food, ano? May Cristobal, galing din po siya Ako, no? Mahina pala Marte Saldar 19 apiece, we are tied once again This is the 6th deadlock of this ballgame Three-point attempt by Kawaling is good. Rabel off the bench, former rookie of the year in the UAB, doing what he does best. First three-pointer in the ball game for FAU. RJ Hazul steps in for that bank shot. RJ Hazul making mid speed of the Tamara one-on-one defense on him. Yes, too small. Yes, Hotel will be to defend RJ Hazul. So now the help side has to be present. Coach Glenn Cabasho using a small man to just force Hazul to post up and not look for his three-point chance. Sabraki Ramos trying to go to Barroca. Barroca trying to post up uh, his Gutilvan, who's probably an inch or two taller than yes. But normally, Barroca plays the point guard position. Sometimes, he gets that height advantage over the smaller point guards, but not against Gutilvan. That's why Barroca was not able to get that ball in his comfort zone. As Coach Glenn Capasha will give Cervantes a breather, Paracael back on the floor for the Tamaraos. Probably yung chess match natin dito in the rotation of these two coaches. Just trying to make sure that fatigue will not be a problem for the respective players. Benedict Fernandez uh, on the floor once again. 22 to 21 is the count. Let Ron find themselves down by a solitary point. As we take a look at the three-point shooting so far, Letran 5 of 6 from distance. Amazing. More than 80% hit 5 of 6. Azul misses from there. So, uh, statistics went down a bit. And here come the FU Tamaras. Fernandez trying to take on uh, Dunkal 1-on-1. -on -one. Uh, he goes to Paracael. He's double-team. He splits that. Puts it up and in. Just the power of the will. Three guys coming up of Paracael. Two teammates were free, but yet he was able to make that basket. Azul leaves it off for Cortez. Cortez crashes to the floor. 19 seconds remaining in this opening quarter. Letran had five players in double digits in their uh, winning game versus San Sebastian. Many to 16, to 15. Azul 13, Guevara 12, and uh, this young man Cortez with 10 points. 66 points coming from five players. And I'm sure Coach Glenn Capasho realizes that Letran is a very strong offensive team. That's why he wants to keep this game on the slow side of scoring, but not if they give up too many three-point baskets. And here's our Toki Toko Me Pagorito scouting report. Jameson Cortez, born in 88. Coach Pro, what's that? First year ko lamang yun. True year ni Coach Ron yun. Pura pa po ang gasolina at pamatahe nyo. 24 to 22 is the score. Nagalit yata si Coach Chan. How time flies. Ayan. Wala pang LRT mo. Yun. Tinatayo pa lang. Ah, meron na, meron na. Wala pang MRT. Yung LRT 1 has the ball. We'll go over to Barocca. 10 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Lutel in trouble. Trying to look for a friend. Triple team on him. And Hazul will force a jump ball. As they both crash to the floor. What I like about these two schools is that they're playing rugged defense and physical defense. 
Pero hindi sila pikon. They know that both teams are just out to win. And that's the kind of respect that they also pay to each other. Makikita mo may respeto sa isa't isa. Laban lang, pagalingan lang. As Letrana will have a chance to tie this ball game at the end of the first quarter. 5.5 seconds remaining. They go straight into Cortez. Here's Azul. 18 for jumper. No good. Got Ponce with a stick back. Also no good. Uh, FEU will be going to the second quarter with a two-point lead. Electric, physical, a lot of action. We will re, 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 we will be looking forward to seeing in the next three quarters. 24 to 22 is the count. FEU by two. Do join us back. This is the 2008 Philippine Collegiate Championships. Second quarter, that quarter action here in the Elite Eight of the PCC for 2008. FU against Letran, and it is the Tamaraos with a two-point lead, 24 to 22. Thanking Smart and KFC. Magu Marjan together with Coach Ronnie Magsano. And these two teams, nip and tuck affair so far for the first 10 minutes. Very unfamiliar with each other's style. I asked several players today if they have met each other for the year. Hindi pa sila naglaro. Hindi pa sila naglalaban. Kaya this is the first time for them to meet here in the year 2008. And uh, in this critical juncture of the tournament, both teams looking for a victory that will be sending them to the final four. It is Barroca with Dotel, Ramos, Fernandez, and Baracaela for the FU Damaraos. Cabonce with that rebound together with Hasul, Cortez, Guevara, and Dangal for the white shirts of Letran. Guevara from the right. Scoops it over to Hasul. Azul, step back. No go against the bell. Rebound is loose. And it is Cortez who picks it up. Napayungan at nahuliban ni Barangel. Yung tira ni Cortez. Barroca pushes it hard. In traffic. Oh, Vince gets the basket. Wow. And that was going to his weak side, which was to his left. Burning rubber, but under control, has the ability to finish in traffic. We'd like to see that again. One, two, three. Oh, spinning in <laughs> midair on that KFC slow mo. Mark Baraka. <laughs> what a move for this guy. Oh, or Baraka, rather. But that basket was nullified. Oh. No continuation in that play. Nutel taking a strong on the baseline. Baraka once again. Hanging in midair. Wala lang pektus yung tila. Tak, 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 tak pa, no? <laughs> Here's Guevara. He takes it strong, puts it up. I Guevara. really like to see Ray Guevara attack the basket more often. Very athletic with an extreme gift of flipping ability. I could not wait for this guy, Ray Guevara, in the open court so we can <laughs> finally see a flying beast slam dunk here. Alam, alam naman natin na kayang-kaya niya yun. Pero yung consistency in getting that basketball and attacking the basket, yun ang hinahanap ko sa kanya. He can go to the line so many times because he will be fouled every time he attacks the basket aggressively. So even if there's no flying V dunk yet, we got a flying V free throw. Guevara knocks in the first. Second one on the way. Likewise in. This is the fifth death knock of the ball game. 24 points apiece. And the ruggedness just continues between the Tron and FEU. Cortez with a steal. Cortez sidestepping move by the big man. One too many though. The big man on the go, parang hindi bagay talaga. That's Marocas defensive stance. And look at Coach Ben Capasho. That turnover really got Coach Glenn Capasho on his feet. Kasi naiwan si Barroca doon sa backcourt at wala na siyang katulong. Kasi gano'ng kakagaling magbaba ng bola pag tinatrap ka. A friend has to show up and help you bring that better down. And patuloy yung full court pressure defense ng magkabi ng kapunan. Barroca gets it safely across against the call. Hazul is there to bother him though. Ball goes over to Natal. Barangayel now, he launches a three. Mark will miss. Rebound uh, to Cortez. All the way, not a body on him. And that's what you've been talking about. No transition defense for FEU. Well, Barroca was uh, boxed up inside uh, their backcourt. But you have to be impressed with the way Hasul has gotten his teammates involved in their offense. Another miss coming from Fernandez. Here come the Knights. Guevara. 
Pivots over to Hazul. He, oh, he drops it down low. Got Ponce trying to create space. Has blocked by Barakael. But Cortez picks up that loose ball. Dangkal now. Over to Cortez. He goes reverse. Blocked by Benedict Fernandez. And Letran, third serving for them with three on the shot clock. And a bailout foul by Barroca. Only three seconds to the Sana Nadindra, but Barroca ending up giving out that foul. That is his second personal foul. We mentioned that Barroca, for him to be effective, he has to stay inside the hard court. And here you see Hasul once again, one of the best players in open court. That's yes, our KFC assist delivery of the quarter. 887-8888 is the number to dial. KFC definitely finger licking good. Not just taking the shots, getting everybody involved. You know that he can score in the 20s, 30s, and even in the 40s, but his ability to get his teammates involved has really made the run a tough team to beat. Yeah, straight away three! will give Letran a five-point lead, 29 to 24. Timeout now whistled or called by coach Glenn Capasho. Under eight minutes remaining in the first half. It's a five-point lead for Letran. Lebron has dropped a 7 to nothing bomb to open the second quarter here on the FEU Tamaraus. They now own a 5-point lead, 29-24. to Magu Marjan together with Coach Ronnie Magsanok and Sharon Yu at the arena in San Juan. In that 7 to nothing glass break, Ibarra pouring in 5 markers. Well, Cortez contributing 2 points as FEU now trying to make its adjustments amidst the very fine defensive pressure exerted by the front here in quarter number 2. Here is uh, the Tamaraos attack coming off that flank Capasha timeout. Adolfo inside, no go. Abonse with that Kalawi rebound as we turn you over to shadow you at courtside with this report. How you perform in practice, that's how you should be today. Those were the thoughts of Coach Louis as he told his nice to re-channel all the red and He specifically gave word to number 8, Abonse. Okay lang, hindi masyung basta patrol the ball. On their defense, he reminded them that when calling for help, call for the weak side elbow. And his last word on offense, watch out for the double in the corner, guys. Thank you so much, Sharon, as we all witness Gutil Bana keep FU scoreless in the second. Your reactions on that report, Coach? Well, defense has really stepped up here for the front. Now, the challenge for FU is how to stay under control without Barroca inside setting the table for them. Barakael looking for the first two or three points for FU in the second. He scoops it over to Adolfo. They find Kowalik. He launches a three. Bang! And that's what the extra pass can give you. Second three-point basket for Kowalik and for the Tamaraos here this ball game. And eye in the sky play. Guevara cannot complete. Cortez pumping. Pumping na yun. Kapiso ko man. Taplo to malun. Very good. It worked. It did work. Ganda naman ng footwork eh. But the track here controlling the offensive rebounding class. Too many second chance possessions here given up by FAU. Mark Zambrano right beside us here saying it wasn't a pump pick, it was a ball pick. Pero tatlo ko magat. Tatlo ko magat. 29 to 27. FEU coming off that Kawaling three. Trying to make it five in a row to tie the small game up. Adolfo, hand off to Kawaling. Puts it on the floor, step to the left, jumper, it's good! Eight points off the bench today for J.R. Kawaling, the former Rookie of the Year, really stepping up without anybody scoring consistency here for the green and gold. Another eye in the sky play, good Ban to Guevara. They've been trying to force that, does not work for the second time in a row. Kawaling has scored all the points of FEU here in quarter number two. Five points, and that is... Uh, Anchor on the 5 to 0 surge here by FEU to tie this game once again as for we, the sixth time. As we take a look at the rebounding battle, a plus seven for the Letron Knights. Uh, Fernandez, beautiful left hand and reverse layup. Well, as long as the Tamaros continue to team, that they need to share that basketball, then they have the advantage because they are quicker than Letron in going to the basket. And after Letron went on that 7 to nothing run, FEU responds with their own version of a 7 to nothing run. They now take a two point lead, 31 29. Not for a fact that basketball is a battle of runs to keep the tech in control the run of the other of their opponent. Normally, uh, figures out on top, and right now, 
the grand fire, the first salvo here in the second quarter, but if you responded so well, especially with Kowaling on board here in quarter number two. As Real Cervantes steps onto the floor once again, Cabonce at the line, knocks in his first flying B free throw. The big guys are bouncing inside. However, they are not converting on those point blank shots. The result, FU is able to run on the other side of the floor, but of course, big boy Cabonce already with eight rebounds here today. The rebounding battles, Cabonce pala pala mag isa, hindi naman nanalo FU. So yung isa ni Devin rebounds na binilang natin sa kanina, wala ron sa kanina. As the ball is tapped out of bounds, possession will remain with Letran. Guevara to Melegrito. Kojak back on the floor. He's matched up with uh, Pollard Fernandez. He loses the leather as Cervantes gave help. Fernandez now will get it across the timeline for the Tabernas. Baracayel against Cabonce. Hey, they put Cabonce on Baracayel this time. Lutel to Kowali. Is this three pointer number three? Comes up short on this one. Baracayel ends up with that leather. Mack will reset the attack over to Cervantes. Fresh shot clock here. Cervantes fakes the spin, fades away. No good. Cabonce with the rebound gives it up to Gutilban, who loses the leather because of the pesky defense of Nutel. Kawaling asking for the ball. Against Cabonce, Kawaling wants to take it strong against the double team. Traveling is what's about it. Third chance at the basket, but this time the run forces a defensive stop. 31 FEU, 34 Letran, 4 and 55. That's another player coming off the bench here for Coach Glenn Capasho. This is Jun Jun Tanuan. Of course, the son of former PBA player Jack Tanuan. Makalimang lineup ni Coach Glenn Capasho inside. And uh, Coach Ronnie, pagka umilos si Coach Glenn Capasho, nagre-respond ulit si yes. Coach Le, uh, Louis Alas. Pag ganun din, the other way around. Yes. If somebody draws, pulls somebody out of the bench, there's an instant response coming from the other coach. As Pellegrino takes it all the way. Going to the corner. Belenchon misses on that three-ball attempt. The chess match continues here at the arena. 31 to 30. FEU by the slimmest of margins. Nutel loses the leather. Ranisa ends up with it. He finds RJ Azul. Azul now will set the table for the white shirts. Finds Daha. Dino trying to take Tanuan off the dribble. Help defense by Baragel. Has the ball end up in Pellegrino's hands. This is on that three ball attempt. And Letran, after going five of six in their first six attempts, uh, just before we set the paper off, Belenchon knocks in another three. This is an amazing shooting clip that Letran has shown here in the first half. How many points? 21 out of the 33 points of Letran coming from three point territory. Baragahel trying to get it back and tie this game. Leans in against the defense of Ranices. Gets the basket. There's nothing more you can do there. Defense was honest, but uh, he was just so athletic in attacking the basket. Ranises, top of the game. Trying to take Tanuan off the dribble. Ranises finds himself free. No go, Hasul sky high for the class. And he takes it back out. Finds Daha underneath. Daha will be fouled by Mak Barakel. Maybe you should understand that they have a very short unit inside the hard court. When somebody takes an attempt, attempt from the white shirt, they have to block off, locate the nearest man available, and take that opportunity to crash the offensive rebounding last time. It's really hurting their chances. 33 all here in the first half. 3 minutes and 17 seconds left. At etong isang hugot ni Coach Louis Alasa, the number 16 guy, J.P. Belenchon. This guy did, did not even play in the Sweet 16. He is a 22-year-old rookie from Iloilo. Yan ang hugotan pag gaganitong format ng tournament. He is a designated shooter. I saw him play in the NCAA and he can really hit the three-point shot. Normally, he comes off the bench because the opponents do not pay close attention to him, but he can deliver those three-point baskets. And he definitely delivered on the KFC delivery assist of the quarter. 887-8888 is the number to dial. That three-point shot was definitely finger-licking good. 34-33 is the score. The Light Church with a one-point lead. Patuloy ang balasa para po parang na 
Poker na pinapanood natin eh. <laughs> May... Kapag gumagawa ka kasi ng game plan, pinamatch up mo na yung mga players na yan doon sa tingin mo na papasok at that given situation. So ngayon, nasa flop pa lang itong mga to as Tanua takes it all the way to the basket. Yun ang pattern. Oh, you talk about the flop. I think that was a river that uh, was wide open for uh, Junjun Tanua. Azul, bothered by Fernandez. Fernandez almost taking that leather away. But Azul recovers. Tangka loses that letter. Tama naman yung bakbakan sa loob. As for this, puts it up. And as for two, he picks up a foul in the process. He's been really trying to exert his dominance inside. And now he will be rewarded with his fifth point of the ball game. And it's turned into a seesaw battle this yes. time around Go Trani. Seven tight, seven deadlocks all in all. And a lot of lead changes. Now Lebron not only hitting well from the outside but really dominating the second chance opportunities. And two guys went in early even before Cortez released that basketball. Double lane violation, jump ball, possession arrow goes over to the Tamaraos. Oh. Here's Sama towing the line on the sideline. This is on that attempt. Ball will go to the Letra Knights. Letran with a one-point lead. Paroka sticking close to Dangkal. Halos nasa loob na ng jersey. Ni Dangkal, ito si Paroka. <laughs> Azul now will get it across the timeline. Azul stop it, pop three. Bada bang! <laughs> Nine three-point baskets on the goal for Letran. Parang nag-seminar sa ito, Coach Ronnie. Harap na uh, Ronnie Magsanong School of three-point shooting. Harap piso-piso ito ah. <laughs> 39-35, Azul. Double black guy on him. He reaches in, gets called for a foul, and catches an elbow to the forehead. Grabe ko, kapitin natin percentage niyan, maya-maya. 69% from the three-point area. Unbelievable. That now gives Letran a four-point lead, 39-35. to And as Coach Ronnie predicted, nobody's breaking away in this ballgame so far. Fernandez in the lane, stretches for the pick and roll. FU within two. Azul against Fernandez. May hatak na ng jersey doon. Good job. Did not hit it. Now with a three. This is on this one. Tanuan colors the board. Paroka surveys the field against three. Paroka trying to go all the way. Reach and foul. Whistle down the call. Isa lang masasabi ko. Both teams playing in the fifth gear here. In the first half. Walang setup setup. There's an opportunity to attack. They will go for it. That run has made a living with their outside shooting. Nine three-point baskets all in all. That is 27 points out of the 39. Well, FU continues to be persistent. They continue to be resilient. And they continue to be a dangerous team here against Letran. Baseline inbound, Sir Brandes from Sama. Look at the big man. Put it on the floor for the sweet layup. Na on the other end. Na nakaw sa na Letran. Pero ang nasila na nakawan. Here comes Paroka. Four on two. Paroka all the way. Paliktad yung take twos. But Fernandez is there. Babies that follow. And Letran will make him pay. Here's Belenchon over to Hazul. Drop down to Daal. That talent finish is good. He picks up a foul in the process. Once again, Hazul creating offense for Letran. When he is not shooting those three-point baskets, he is issuing those nifty passes. Once again, Letran in the lead by two points. 41 to 39. When we return, it is going to be Daal with a bonus free throw as he got fouled on that last bit of action. Elite 8 action continues here at the arena in San Juan as Dino Daa throws to the line for a bonus free throw and this free throw is courtesy of that RJ Hazul assist. That's correct and so many players contributing heavily on the offensive end. But really, it has also been in the rebounding battle that the Tran has been able to overcome the mighty stand of 30. Yeah. Top by three points at this stage of the ball, 42 against 39. Ah, completes that three-point play is lifted by Coach Louis Alaskevara back on the floor and check out the pressure defense of Letran. Cervantes, strong handover over to Paroga, hits him in the face. And Letran will secure that leather. Here's Valenciano, that rookie for Letran. 
looking for a friend. He's in trouble. Bounces it down low, but Barroca is right there. And he will foul Del Rosario. Del Rosario seeing his first taste of action in this ball game. Matched up against Barroca and gets the feel of Mark Barroca right away as Barroca dove on top of him. A lot of premium on quickness. When you talk about playing defense and these two coaches sending in small men to try and just take away those passing lanes. Try to make life miserable and setting up the offense for their opponent. Pareho naman sila ng game plan eh. And the team that better executes the type of defensive strategy that they want will come out on top here today. The problem for Coach Glenn Capasio now is Mark Barroca has picked up yes. foul number three. Laking tagok nun para dito sa Tamaraos. Del Rosario misses his first free throw. Take a look at the second flying V free throw. It's good. As Ramos will check back in for Tanuan. 33 to 39 as the count. LeBron by four points under a minute remaining here in the first half. Luta against Dal Rosario. Bounces it over to Sarpantes. Pinakita pa isi ko para lumayo si Cabonce. Lumayo naman. Nagpanda naman ito si Cabonce. Fernandez. Against Valencia, Fernandez puts it on the floor, leads in, comes up short, he gets the rebound, and on the follow, he is fouled with 37 seconds remaining in this first half. That's just plain desire on the part of Benedict Fernandez. He was under right in that battle against the tall sequoias of the run, but then again, his experience is able to secure that second chance for FU. Seven points in the ballgame for Benedict Fernandez, less than a minute left here. Important here for FU, not to allow them to post a bigger lead. More than five points that they posted early on here this quarter. Fernandez knocks in the second. Adding the left round lead to three. Here's Del Rosario. He finds Belenchon. Belenchon puts it on the floor. Loses that leather. Fernandez now surveys the field. And he is tripped <laughs> up. If you don't know what to Kakatuwa pa nung ulit itong mga batang ito. Non-stop action. Natutuwa ka ngayon, coach, dahil pinapanood natin. Pero pag ikaw yung coach, di ba play defense with your feet, not with your hands? Hindi ka matutuwa. Pero whatever it is that will work, you will take, especially here in this type of a format. But when you lose a game, you're automatically put it out. Benedict Fernandez is back on the line. Knocks in the first flying B free throw this time. Points, three points so far. And that's it. But I think Fernandez is one of two remaining players of the 2005 champion team that played for, uh, let me see, assistant coach, uh, Sir Anton Montinola. Mamaya, pwede ko natin yung pangalan. Azul na. Flores. Yon, coach Bert Flores. Azul, against a double team, he's chance. Doesn't lose that defense. Five seconds remaining in this uh, first half. Azul oh. will be fouled by Nutel as they tried to break away. Melegrito was ahead of him. So it looks like it will be called an advantage now. Could have been a home run for FAU as Nutel took them well away from the Knights. But then Azul once again smartly. And it is an unsportsman oh. foul this time. Two free throws plus ball possession here. Could have been a golden chance for FU to regain the lead heading to the third quarter. So Azul will take two shots and ball possession will remain with LeBron with only 2.5 seconds remaining. So this can be a four point swing for them. Yes. Or four point possession. Oh, but this is nine points in the ball game from RJ Azul. Parang ayon yung libre gusto niya may bantay. Azul, second free throw. It's good. That gives LeBron a two-point lead. They can go for five with a three or four with a deuce. They got 2.5 seconds to work with. Azul will inbound. FEU with no fouls to give. Azul looks for a threat. In the backcourt, Del Rosario with a Hail Mary. Straight away, just a little bit too much muscle. Could have been the tenth three-point basket for LeBron, but instead, they will go into the second half with a uh, solitary basket advantage over FEU at 44 against 42. 
So do join us as Coach Ronnie Balixano will break down the first half of action. All of that and more when we return. After battling through eight deadlocks and nine lead changes, the FEU Tamaras find themselves down by two against the Colegio de San Juan de Letran Knights, 44 to 42. Letran outshot and outrebounded FEU in the first half. But if you're coach Glenn Capasho, you have to be happy with the fact that you're only down by a solitary basket heading to the third quarter. Outrebounded by seven, outshot to the tune of uh, 83 point shots as compared to two for FAU, but it has been in the block department that FAU has been able to shut down the numerous offensive rebounds of Letran. In fact, for the first half, Magu, Letran had more offensive rebounds than defensive rebounds, but they were not able to convert as much as they want to, and the result, they were uh, on top by two points, heading to half the Third quarter, action underway. Melegrito misses on the opening drive. He's got Cortez, Ibarra, Taha, and Tangal with him. Total starts off for the FU Tamaras with Fernandez, uh, Aldridge, Ramos, Pagparangaela. He launches a three, misses on that one. As we thank uh, Smart and KFC for bringing this coverage right to your television sets. Uh, both teams shooting blanks early in this third quarter after both shot 50 or better in the first half. Yes, both teams shooting 50% or more. However, Edvan had six more conversions from the three-point area. Perfect opportunity right now for Edvan to gain headway here without Barocca starting in the third quarter for FAU. Of course, Mark Barocca picked up three personal fouls in the first half. Benedict Fernandez misses from the outside. Cortez with the rebound and the ball is with Daha. Tito trying to muscle his way through will be fouled and the fouling spree continues here in the third quarter. One of two players was able to score in twin digits. Dino Dao already with 10 points. Sharing the scoring leadership with RJ Azul. 20 out of the 44 points coming from Azul and Dino Daha. The first half saw 26 total fouls called. That's uh, just a picture of how physical <laughs> this ball game has been so far. And there have been how many free throws attempted? 34 free throws already. 18 awarded to the Tram. Make that 19 after that conversion coming from Dino Da. What FAU shooting? 14 of 16 for 88 percent. Tataasa no. Di nagsasayanga magkabilang kapanana. Da'a, second free throw, likewise, and that stretches the Lepron lead to 4, 46, to 42. This is Elite 8 action here in the Flying V 2008 Philippine Collegiate Championships. Fernandez loses the leather on that pass. Here comes Guevara, crossover move, Guevara skies, make the roll of Biggest lead in the ballgame right now for the front. FU needs a good start here in quarter number three. They don't have Marota. That's why the shooters have to come out here and show that run that they can hit those three-pointers as well. And Coach Rani, another indication of how tight this ballgame has been. This is the biggest lead of the ballgame, a six-point lead for the run. That's correct, and as I said, this is the perfect chance here for the run to build a cushion without the best point guard on the floor right now for FAU. And that's why on the other side for FAU, they have to understand. They have to execute better and uh, take away those unnecessary turnovers that have shot themselves in the court. Coach Norman Black and the rest of the Ateneo Blue Eagles definitely playing close attention to this ballgame. They await the winner in the final four. Well, on the other side, it is the Delasar Green Archers awaiting the winner of the matchup between the San Bella Red Lions and the Aureliano Chiefs. The run will be taking it strong to the basket for the consecutive time. They realized that FU had six blocks in the first half. However, without Ramos and Cervantes playing at the same time, it, it means that only one big guy is present to be the last line defender, and Netran will take that. They will attack and force FU to give a foul. Guevara stretches the biggest lead to seven with that first flying V free throw. Atamarangana, Coach Rani. Letran now pouring it on, stepping on the gas pedal to the metal. Guevara goes two for two. 
It's an eight point lead for the Knights, 50 to 42. If you're coach Glenn Lamasha, how long do you keep Mike Barocca on the bench? He will make the decision very soon. Less than two minutes from their quarter number three. They are down on the big eight point margin already. Expect him to call them a timeout. Call them a timeout. They, they do not buy a basket for this offensive attack while the run continues to uh, score on the other side of the floor. Coach Ronnie, we say big in uh, for Bangayo Maha late shooters. Not in Akala. I don't eight points big. Walu walu lang. This is the biggest lead of the ball game already. Eight dead locks, nine lead changes. So pag kami bumitaw dito, baka mahirapan mga habol yung maiwanan. Isang run lang ay nahalap na ito ng butikan. Mahirap na makabalik because these are two very sound defensive squads. And today, we expect that this score will low. But so far, they've been shooting extremely well from the outside. As another foul is whistled away from play, Napuloy Bakbana in the lane. This time around. Individual defense IQ in the Tumor players, Napakatataas. They know the, the, the tendencies of their opponent. I think simply by watching them over the years. The pass was whistled for that last foul. Here's Baraka El. They are down by eight points. They have not scored a basket here in the second half. Adolfo over to Ramos. He launches from the outside, and FEU is on the board. Very important basket there coming from the Tamarows. Let's not the other way. Oh, si Ramos erasing that Pellegrito at that. Here's Baraka El. No go. The ball ends up with Guevara. Guevara. Steps on the gas, puts it on the glass for two. That's the aggressiveness. I wanted to highlight in the first half. Guevara has that ability to break the defense down because of his uh, extreme athletic ability. Guevara now with double digits, 11 points in the ballgame. For the Knights, Baragayana over to Ramos. Another attempt from the outside. Great as a whistle. Coach Capacho very happy with that conversion back to back coming from FPU. That high post area very open. FPU keeping this game close down by 6, 52 46. Laha drops it down low. Cortez underneath. And if FPU can keep LeBron at bay like this, uh, being down by just 6 or 8 points, it will definitely keep Coach Glenn Capacho happy while Baragal is resting on the bench as we turn it over to courtside of which are you? During the pregame huddles and all the timeouts during the first half, Coach Glenn cannot trust the number more of this, so I went up to him, I asked him, how come the players haven't been performing up to par in that area? Well, he blames it on the Latran Knights' good defense and also his players' poor execution, so he is expecting that they will be swinging the ball more here in the second half. Now, on counteracting the Latran Knights' perimeter offense, well, he blames it on the Latran Knights, um, Latran Knights, the players' defensive lapses, the FBU Samuels' defensive lapses, and they were told to step it up in all aspects and be quick in covering more areas in defense. Thank you so much, Shen. Right now, another problem for FBU is the fact that they have already dropped six free throws here in the third quarter. Although the run shot only 56% penalty in the first half, here in the third quarter, six out of six. Maronga re-announces his presence on the floor, 54 to 48 for that short stab. The run still ahead. Pellegrino forks it over the Ta. He attacks the baseline. Air raised by Faragher. And here come the Tamaros on the run. Three on two. Fernandez to Barroca. And Mark Barroca is fouled. And he'll trip to the line for two flying V free throws. Eight blocks in the ball game for FAU. They have been able to offset their high disadvantage because they have been persistent in really offering that outside defense a lot of intimidation. But what about Barroca realizing that he needs to take over the game of the FAU Tamarows even if he is saddled with three personal fouls? Barroca knocks in the first free throw. Not a smile on the face of Coach Glenn Natasha. Barocca's back on the floor. They're starting to make some headway, but they will need to do more than that. Barocca goes two for two, cutting the Letran lead down the floor, 54 to 50. Eight points in the ballgame for Barocca, just behind the pace setting Benedict Fernandez was 10 points. Pellegrino lobs it over to Guevara. 
They fight Dangal. Dangal puts it on the floor. See some daylight. No go. Almost for the rebound. Baroka will direct the attack forward. Pass over to Adolfo. Reverse layup should count because Guevara tapped that ball away as it hit the backboard. In the last six point run of MU, Baroka has been responsible for all of those points. Two made baskets and another nifty pass here to Adolfo. Excellent pass by Baroka, and that was our KFC replay. Guli Guli, the direct Francis, the action on. As Baroka crashes to the floor, is this foul on him? No, it's an offensive foul. He's been responsible here for so many good things for that view. And uh, there was a collective sigh of relief uh, from the fans of the FBU Dominos when Baraka crashed to the floor, thinking it might just be foul number four. No key through the offensive foul. And uh, Baraka really sold that foul to the official. Talagang uh, inexaggerate niya yung bahagyang pagtama ni Dino Dino Dino. Uh, but he was able to earn that call. A chance for FBU to equalize once again. Down by only 254, 52. Gumil Bat back on the floor for the Knights. And it's been his assignment all game long to be the shadow of Mark Baraka putting a body on him. Here's Mark Baraka. Puts it on the floor against Azul. Talawa sa malubong. No problem for Mark Baraka. Now FBU is showing signs of really being patient. Seven points in the ball game. And the veterans of the Tamaraos have come out to play here the third quarter after being down by as much as eight points. 50 against 42. This is the eighth deadlock of this ball game. Ninth deadlock rather. 54 apiece. Da ah, sneaks one through. Picks up a foul in the process. He'll have a more shot. Stops the 12 4 run by the FU Tamaraos. And Dino Daha is a pillar of strength in the interior for Letran. Beautiful KFC replay there as Dino Daha got the basket plus a foul. 14 points in the ballgame so far for Dino Daha. Now Letran's bench players, which outscored the FU second unit inside the heart for the first led by RJ Asu to pour in 10 points off the bench for Letran in half number one. As Alvin Caponce will recheck or check back into this ballgame for Daha. Daha's got 15 points already halfway through the third quarter. Baroka gets it across the timeline. Adolfo over to Baraka. He finds Ramos over to Fernandez for the three. No go. Ramos with the offensive rebound. Will he reset it? He kicks it back out to Fernandez. They swing it to Adolfo. 16 seconds on the FEU shot clock. Under four and a half on the quarter clock. Paragael fades away from the elbow. It's good. And the flex play has worked wonders for FEU here in the third quarter. Three, four passes, two ball reversals, a lot of screens, and the result down by only one, 57 56. Less than five minutes left here in the third. Abonse weaves it over to Guevara against the zone defense of FEU. Azul tries to put it on the floor, but he hopped before he dribbled. That's a traveling violation. The defense closed out long. RJ Azul had numerous three-point baskets in half number one. And he here, should take what the defense gives him. And here comes the KFC assist of the quarter. Beautiful delivery for the FEU. Damaraos Barakael with the shot. 887-8888 are the digits to dial KFC. Definitely bigger looking good as a ball ball gets a reverse layup. A lot of ball movement, a lot of spotting the open man here for FEU. And after being down 50 against 42, they are on a 16 against 3 run here against the run. Dangal over to Azul. Letran under fire. Azul hops one up. No go. Caponce tracks down that rebound. Fresh shot clock for Letran. And Dangal will reset this attack. Baramel with that extended zone over to Azul. They find Cortez inside for the teardrop. You have to give it to Coach Glenn Capacho. They were burned for eight three-point baskets in half number one. Yet he is dropping to a 2-3 zone, trying to challenge the outside shooters of Petran to once again do what they did in half number one. Ramos will be fouled by Cabonce as he tried to hand it off to Barakael. Barakael has really worked hard here in the third quarter. And together with the... Uh, Mark Baroka and Adolfo together and Ramos especially they have really worked doubly hard to rally FEU try and get the lead going into the fourth quarter although we still have three minutes and nine seconds left here in quarter number three Adrich Ramos buries the first flying V free throw 
Very promising itong si Aldrich Ramos no? Ramos goes two for two, six points in the ball game for him, and he puts FEU back on the top side of the scoreboard, 60 to 59. Azul from Tangkal. Trying to take Adolfo off the dribble. They swing it to the left. Patience. I was about to say patience being exude, but Gibbara knocks down the three. Found a slight opening. Makes the defense pay. Ninth three-point basket of the ball game for Letran. Swings the lead back to them. But Benedict Fernandez from the weak side of a pass coming from Aldrich Ramos. Fernandez did not get the basket but picked up a foul. Check out the KFC replay. Hang time action for Fernandez. He'll have to earn it from the line with these two flying V free throws. Fernandez knocks in the first. You have a feeling that now FU is beginning to locate the gaps along that defense of Letran. The first half, hirap na hirap silang mag-execute. But now, readjustment on the patterns by Coach Glenn Capacho's offense. Suddenly, that flex play has hurt Letran's defense here in the third period. Ray Guevara will be lifted by J.P. Melenchon on the Letran side. We are tied at 62. The 10th deadlock of this ballgame. Melenchon to Azul for the three. Ba -ba bang Difficult shot coming from RJ Azul. Catch and shoot on the run. And once again, the run going to their best ally, and that is the three-point line. 65 the run, 62 FEU. Fernandez over to Ramos. They're looking for Maroka. Here comes the race point guard. Again, traffic gets the basket. And he picks up a foul. This guy is really good. From the left side, cut his way to the right side of the floor. Kaponza showing up. Hasul showing up, but still Baraka in traffic, finishing off with an N1 opportunity. And it looked even better on that KFC replay. Seven points in the ball game from Mac Barroca. Limited minutes here in the third quarter. Another the personal three. Trouble. Wow. And here comes the specialist, Coach Ronnie. <laughs> you had the scouting report on this guy. You said he was a designated yep. hitter, and he is proving it with his second triple in this ball game. No doubts. No doubt about the fact that he is a fearless three-point shooter. For Letran, the weapon has been outside shooting. For FEU, it's the fearless drive to the basket. That's why this is still a different talk of here. Letran only on top by a solitary possession. 68-65. Bang Bang Barakel will troop to the line for two shots as Coach Louis Alas gathers his boys for a short huddle. While Barakel takes his first flying V free throw. Mock knocks in the first. Uh, ten points in the game so far for Barakel. Quality ni tong larong to napakataas, ano? And uh, here in the Elite Eight, a chance for these two teams to make it to the Final Four. And remember, no team outside the UAAP teams have won the title here in the Philippine Collegiate Championships. Barangayel misses the second. The 68 to 66 is the score. Letran still up by two. Azul weaving it over to Tangkal. Doesn't use the Renese screen. Launches from the outside, stepping on the line. No go. Barangayel sky high for the rebound. Pivots to get away from trouble. Here comes Barroca in the lane. Hand off to Ramos. Puts it off the glass for Joe. Now if he's trying to wear down Letran's transition defense by pushing the basketball and attacking at every opportunity. Another three. No go for Belenchon. We are tied for the 12th time. A dozen ties in this ballgame so far as Melegrito will check back in for Tangkan. Remember that FU was out rebounded in the first half. They gave up 12 offensive rebounds. But here in the third quarter, we see very minimal offensive rebounds coming from Letran. Barroca, no chance to get that basketball because of the pesky defense of Pellegrino. They drop it down low to Ramos. A cut coming from Adolfo. He gets that later. 
a few back ahead by two. Radices all day for three. Bada bang! Why not? 30 points. The 33 points of the run out of the 71 coming from the three point area. And once again, they are in the lead. 71 70, less than 33 seconds left in the third quarter. Barakael and Baroka will lose the leather to the sideline. Nagulangan ni Kojak. Kojak Melegrito with a defensive jam that time around. Under half a minute remaining in the third. Lebron up by 171 to 70. Melegrito loses the leather, but Melechon is there to pick it up. Azul with 10 on the shot clock. Puts it on the floor. Azul, slop and pop. No go. Ramos steps it over to Barroca with only 10 seconds remaining. Barroca finds Adolfo underneath. Nakita oh. Pasi Fernandez. A little too much muscle on that shot. Five, seven, four seconds to go. Here comes Melechon. Three ball. Straight away. No good. Woo! 36 points of Letran, more than 50% from the three-point area, yet FU is only down by one point. So at the end of the Rubbish. first 36 minutes of action, it is 71 for Letran, 70 for the uh, for Eastern University. Do join us back for the final quarter. And final quarter of action, the Elite Eight of the 2008 Philippine Collegiate Championships, Letran and FBU. One point ball game, 71 to 70 here at the Arena in Savan. Aldridge Ramos changes that, coming from that Barocca assist. And it has been the guns of the three point shooting artillery of Letran and the squatting by quarter. Look at the efficiency of this team. Almost scoring in the quarter above the 20 point barrier. Azul launches a three, no go. Barroca for the rebound. He pushes that leather. He fights Barakael on the wing. Barakael makes it back to back hits for the Tamaraos. The persistent Tamaraos now grabbing a three point lead. A fight start here in quarter number four. Anchored on Barroca. So it is Fernandez with Barakael, Barroca, Adolfo, and Ramos against Azul who finds Caponce inside, high off the glass is that shot, that's good! And Coach Lou will, buy, will take that basket, big basket coming from the front as FU threatening to build a cushion here to start the fourth quarter. Belegrito, Belinchon and Ranices make up the five for the white shirts of Letran as Azul almost crashed into coach Ronnie Magzano. Beauty foul given up there by Benedict Fernandez. Barroca finally bottled up by the defense of Letran. It's been so slippery, so, so deceivingly quick in issuing nifty passes. And of, as a, of course, we would like to thank KFC and Smart Telecommunications for making this coverage possible. This is the Full Oil Flying V 2008 Philippine Collegiate Championships brought to you by Smart, IPLET, KFC, and... No, not you, Mark Sangrano. He didn't bring us. He said, Mark Sangrano, he's going to bring us. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Sana walang talit si Mark. Hindi ka ba yung score, oh? Naririnig nila Boss Crosby to. Pero niyan, dalang kabutihan. Yan. Ramos played really well here. Now given a breather by Cervantes. Guevara launches a three. Early offense by the front face off. And that's been the fuel of their offense. They've loaded. They've loaded their artillery with a lot of three-point shots. And here today, the front with 13 three-point baskets. 39 off the 76 points coming from the long court. And that gives the Knights another two point lead as Barroca will be whistled for an offensive foul. Excellent defense by Melegrito, and that will be foul number four on Barroca. And Coach Greg Capasio was totally uh, unhappy with that last sequence. Well, Barroca was threading the needle, really trying to play physical against the top team fans of Melegrito. At that time around, the officials did it. And as offensive foul, the Luther will be spelling Barroca. Once again, if he is in dire straits, dire straits at this stage of the ballgame. Coach Glenn Capasso was warned, complaining too much to the referees. Under eight and a half remaining in this Elite Eight matchup. Azul to Taha. Taha's back on 
the floor against Maragall. Up and under, move back on the Rivers! Good offense there, run by Letras, slowly inside. High percentage took at the result. Four point margin for Letras over at the end. Fernandez, hounded by Azul, picks up his dribble, gets it over to Azulfo. They find Baragal, Zabriki, he drives strong, float over the jumper, no good. Rebound goes to Fernandez and he is hacked. Benedict Fernandez all over the place as we turn it over to Sharon Yu at Quirkside with this report. For this last stretch, Coach Louis kept it pretty short and sweet as he just had two things to say. Let's not be tentative with our switching. Then he pointed out to Belegrito as he explained, Denai Baroka, guys. Thank you so much, Sharon, and Kojak uh, Milagrito not just denying Barroca, but when Barroca actually got the letter, picked up the fourth personal foul yes. on Barroca. Perfect chance once again here for Letran without Barroca in the hard court. He has a lot of veterans inside here in the fourth court. Total thinking three, forks it over again. Barroca, not well missed, but the rebound goes back to the Pamela. Cervantes back on the floor, keeping that possession alive. Here's a low four, trying to spin off baseline, but lose the leather. Mass touches whistle down Branises. Coach Glenn Capasso begging and still tell when there's a second possession, get a hold of that basketball and set the table up once again. We're down by four at this stage of the game. 7 and 31. We need to stay close. We need to put pressure on the clock. Baragal from the wing man. Double team against him. He goes to serve Bandes. They see Fernandez for the three. Benedict. Two bounces off that rim, no goal. Radizas picks up that rebound, and Gutelban will push the leather. He finds Guevara. Guevara does not like what he sees. He resets it over to Azul. Fernandez all over Azul at this point of the game. Seven seconds on the Lebron shot down. Azul, nowhere to go. He finds Guevara. Two seconds to shoot. Guevara goes for three. What a huge basket coming from Ray Guevara. 20 big points for him. 81 for Lebron. 74 for FEU. Baragael trying to pull his team back into this game is fouled. Unbelievable shooting touch that the Lebron makes. Brought here today this afternoon as we take a look at the mighty roaring Sun Feather Red Lions. They will be playing later on this afternoon against the Arellano University for the right to face Dallas All in the Final Four. And of course, San Pedro wants to finish in the second spot. They're dreaming of making it as the best team here in this competition. But of course, Ateneo, La Salle, the winner here today has a lot of things to say about that. Maragall will miss the first free throw. Crucial stretch here for FU. They were down best because 8, 6 and 39. Marocco with 4 fouls. Down by 7, 81 74. Down to 6. As Aldrich Ramos, who you've been giving praises to, gives Baragali a breather. This guy played great in the third quarter and early fourth. But as a 1 2 2 zone press is employed by FEU. And Marocco is once again sent in here by Coach Glenn Capasho. Sabaga, what are you saving him for? This is the only game that they are looking at because if they don't take it past the front, then it's the end of the road for FAU. Cortez is smothered underneath. Here comes Barroca. He loses the leather. Guevara ends up with it. Punches it out to good day back for the touchdown. Back to an eight point lead for the left front, 83 to 75. Coach, uh, coach, uh, coach, I've seen enough as we take a look back. as we leave you with some sights on this KFC replay. Beautiful finish for Gundogan. lead of the ball game, posted once again by the Lebron Knights with just over six minutes remaining in this basketball game. 83 to 75 is the score. Cortez with another steal. Here comes Guevara. He is blocked by Aldrich Ramos as we take a look at the three-point shooting so far. Amazing. 14 of 24, 58%. 52 out of the 83 points coming from Rainbow Territory. 
FEU is a very sound defensive team, but what can you do when players hit their shots? Shot clock winding down, perfect from the three-point area. And just an example, Ray Guevara, four out of four from the three-point plan, 20 points all in all. Guevara over to Cabonce, Fabergé. They find Wittel Brun. Letran looking for the first double-digit spread in this ballgame. Melegrito with 10 seconds to work with, watches from the outside. No go, Cabonce rebound, he is smothered by Aldridge Ramos, and Ramos once again stopping it out for the FU Tabras. Putel looking for Baroga, well covered by Melegrito. Finds him anyway. Baroga against Melegrito, trying to create space, goes to Ramos. Five and a half remaining in this basketball game, five seconds on the FU shot clock, as Real Cervantes will be fouled underneath. That's the right thing to do here for FU. That has been their key to success in keeping this game close. Take it strong to the basket. But of course, Morocco has to understand. He has to stay under control. He's trying to set the table for FU, but they cannot afford costly turnovers down the stretch. They need his presence. They need him inside the floor. But he has to open his eyes and keep the perspective that there's still a long way to go and that they can still mount a comeback. So Wanda's misses that first free throw. Splits his charities under five and a half remaining in this game. And a turnover. Here comes Cervantes. He picks up that leather. A golden opportunity for the FU. Tamaras Kawali for three. Gets it to go. All the three point baskets of FU coming from the winning three of nine. 33% in just like that. FU once again. Reading down the next of the nights. 83 79. And Agrito has other things in front. Oh, 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 oh. Gets the three now. I thought he was too quick for his own good in that last sequence, but let me see as the officials will be stopping play here. I think uh, it was whistled a delay of game. One of the white shirts snapped the ball away after that basket. Uh, as we take a look at the KFC instant replay. Oh, and Kabonse. Clear as daylight, touching that basketball and leaving it away, and that's a technical foul because that's the second delay of game fraction, which Louis Alas does not like. It pulls out the bounce and gives him an earful. That's a, his fifth personal foul. Technical foul is deemed as a personal foul, and that will keep him away in this game for good. That's a double black foul right now for the trap. It's 85 to 79. At the line for two all important free throws. Knocks in the first. Well, you take a ball, so leading rebounder for the Trump with 11 big rebounds. Was really playing well. Mental laps on his side. Two for two for Barocca. Makes it a two or uh, a four point ball game. 85 to 81, Caponce will have to sit this one out. Try and cheer on his team the rest of the way as Andrew Trauma steps on the sideline. Another mental lapse. Uh, nerves starting to come in oh, yes. play in this stretch. And you talk about players really wanting to win. We saw the sense of urgency from the get-go. Right now it's a battle of execution down the stretch. 458, 85-81, Petron. Pellegrino, giving a big fight down. Does not want to use it. Menegrito surveys the field, attacks, loses the ball to Cervantes, and here comes Barroca. Barroca hesitation, move on down. A little too much spin on that layup, and Azul corners the rebound. Sometimes it's a case of trying too hard. If those points are point guards committing that mistake in the last two sequences. Cortez to Guevara. Azul looking for Menegrito. So he decides to go to the baseline, fades away. Azul, what a big basket! A little separation is all that he needed. Nephew's turnover turned into a two-point basket by Azul. Three to two possession lead here by the front, 87-81. Zarbata sent off to Nutella. Just over four minutes remaining in this Elite Eight matchup. Nutella hand off, come running for three. No go, nah, with a big board. Well, is slow to get up as Azul will slow the pace of their basketball game. Under four minutes remaining, it's a six point lead for the white shirts of Letrana. They want to set that lead with Antineo. Can they hold on? Tino Da attacks, loses that lever. Sales out of bounds, last touch is whistled on the one. Lucky break there for Sir Mantis, could have been 12 from 8 
that possession will stay with the with only five seconds left on the shot clock. As coach Louis Alas wants to talk things over with his boys. 87 to 81, left run by six, under four minutes remaining in this ballgame. into the final 3.39 of this FEU LeBron matchup in the Elite Eight. Agumar Jana with Coach Ronnie Magsano at the arena and someone taking a look at our game reset. Coach? Two timeouts left here for FEU. Same for LeBron with two. LeBron already over the limit. FEU still with two fouls here. Ah, loses that number. Fast dance by Baroga. Fernandez to Baroga against two. He is held down as he tried to take it strong. Baroga trying to be a solo grapple here, uh -huh. a man on a mission trying to do everything by himself. Oh, definitely. Fearless basketball is what Maroka is playing here, throwing caution to the wind. Every attack is a golden attack here for Maroka. He realizes that losing is not an option, will be the end of the road for the Tamaras. But with 3 and 33 in the game clock, Maroka who has 30 points and 5 rebounds, trying to rally FEU past the track. And this ball game is, wasn't just about the starters. Bench scoring has been huge for these Letron Knights. As Coach Luyalas smartly inserting Hasul and Guevara off the bench, pulling in 35 uh, points off the bench as compared to the 27 very decent production right wise of the FU Tamarans. Barocca misses that second free throw, so we got a five point ball game, 87, 82, under three and a half remaining. For the elite eight for one of these teams, Azul looks up at the clock. Azul loses his defender, flips one up, no go! What a sorry miss! Ramos for the rebound, gives it over to Baraka. Here comes the man on the mission. Baraka kicks it over outside to Baraka. Fernandez in the lane. Fernandez flips it up, gets the basket. That's just experience that the part of Benedict Fernandez. And now FU down by Pune, solitary possession, 87 to front. 84 for the top around. Bakal over the Gabilpan. He finds the soul. Three for the three. He now pulls the Ramos. Go, go. Barroca sky high for that rebound. And a chance for FU to inch closer or even tie with a three. What do they do? Maragall wants to set it up. Bach puts it on the floor. Spins, puts it off the glass. No. But he is fouled. So he'll have to earn it from the line. That's why it's a beauty to watch these two teams. They just don't know when to give up. They believe that every time there is time left on the shot and game back, there's an opportunity to grab this victory. That's why these two teams are such winners in their own right. The problem is Coach Lani, Coach Louis Alassis. Front court is getting thinner. Yes. Dino Dao was missing for his first personal foul. Capdonce is already out of this game. Uh, they, he sends in Ranises. He's down to just Cortez and Ranises on that uh, reliable front line. And this is going to be a big development against the run. And that's why Coach Realis is also about to send in his best cover here today. Ray Guevara on the floor to try and finish the mission likewise for the run. And trying to get to the final four for the first time. Barangayel splits his charities, 87-85, Lebron still holding on to this two-point lead, Menegrito against Baroga, it's one-on-one, -on -one. they isolate these two point guards. Menegrito for the three, knocks it home! 15 three-point basket for Lebron, and uh, probably one of the biggest three-point shots uh, coming from Kojak Menegrito. Fernandez gets it over to Barroca. A little color developing between Fernandez and Bellacriva. Here's Barragal. He finds Ramos. Steps back. Face left. Jumper is good. Yeah, that's why it was so important for Bellacriva to push that run to a, uh, with more breathing room right now. The front still on top 90 against 87. Less than two minutes left here in the payoff quarter. We are within the flying V2 minutes. Here's Azul. Trying to go through a Melegrito pick, does not materialize. LeBron by three. Melegrito, crossover. Barroca is right there. Barroca scoops it over to Cervantes all the way, and it's a one point ball game. Big, big defensive stop initiated by Barroca. And once again, 
Pellegrito loses the ball because of the Baracayal pressure and Barroca in the earlier play stole that ball away with four personal fouls. That's correct now. The small men are battling for precious possessions. And here is the KFC assist delivery of the quarter. Andrej Ramos delivers for them the pass. 887-8888 is the number to dial for not this all the way. No basket, but there is a foul with barely under a minute and a half remaining here in the Elite Eight for the loser of this ball game. Yes, without Caponce, Caponce, without that, they are to man the front line for Lebron. Therefore, smaller last line defenders are present for Lebron. And that was looking for Benedict Fernandez to attack the basket, and that will give him an opportunity to give the lead back to a field with two free throws. And Coach Louis Alas will call their penultimate timeout. They still lead by one, 19 to 89, a minute and 29 remaining in this basketball game. Back with us here at the arena in San Juan, taking a look at the Arellano Chiefs. They are setting up, they are gearing up and getting ready to take on the mighty roaring set by the Red Lions in the last Elite Eight matchup here in the Philippine Collegiate Championships. Oh, it's Chairman Lake Boa, always in attendance here <laughs> at the Flying VPCC. And Barucky uh, Macabana, see Chairman Ray. Before this game, I was talking to him, and he was really enjoying the quality of basketball yes. being matched together here in the arena. I think one of the best we've seen in the recent years, we talk about the quality of uh, the competitors who made it to the Sweet 16, and now we are in the Elite 8, the final playing day in the Elite 8, and we'll be moving forward to the Final Four uh, by Saturday. It's going to be this coming Saturday here at the arena, and the finals will be held at the Big Dome come Monday afternoon. The five on the floor for FU will be Barroca, Fernandez, Baracael, Cervantes, and Aldridge Ramos. Fernandez will be taking some free throws uh, as Ranices uh, is on the floor for the uh, together with uh, Cortez, Milicrito, Guevara, and Azul. Fernandez knocks in the first Brian V free throw. He has tied up, Coach Ronnie. 15 points in the ball game for Benedict Fernandez. This are two crucial free throws that can put a lot of pressure on the front. Should Fernandez convert the last of these two charities. Second free throws of NFPU is on the top side of the scoreboard as Nutel will replace Fernandez for defensive purposes. Full court pressure defense by the Pamanas. Ranises. To get Barra back to Ranises, the big man's got to take it across the timeline. Ranises surveys the field. Cervantes all over him. They weave it over to Guevara. Guevara will be fouled, held down by Cervantes, and that is one of the two fouls to get for FEU. That's the advantage of not being over the limit, especially in the dying moments of the ball game. FEU, 24 seconds in the shot clock, needs a defensive stop. 91 to 90, Lebron down by one. Manises pops out to receive the letter. Cervantes all over him. They go to Guevara. Guevara against Paramel. Excellent matchup here. Double team on him. Pelegrito, go Jack all the way to the hole. Scoops it up and out. But there is a foul. Uh, Lebron faithful up on their feet. Yes. It's running. Enjoying every ounce of action as we take another look at it here at, in our KFC replay. Last line defender was already present. Coach Lula's entering the hard court, trying to go to his uh, cage is down. That's Ray Guevara. Ray Guevara sprawled on the floor here on the sideline, and uh, they're taking a look at uh, his right leg. Ray Guevara, missing a little in pain. Landed awkwardly that last time out. He has played so well here for the front. In fact, Ray Guevara leads the team in scoring here today with 20 points. Anchored with four three-point baskets. And Belegrito will be trooping to the line for two shots. Uh, as a uh, 
Ray Guevara is suffering, uh, or battling a case of cramps. Uh, extended action of Chadita as uh, our court side reporter Sharon Yee has picked up and uh, has given us uh, the advice that Ray Guevara is suffering from cramps. He's still on the sideline and uh, being stretched out uh, by the therapist. Bellegrito now, two all important charities to try and give the lead back to Lebron. Misses on that first, Kojak with a sorry miss. Needing the second one with just 63 seconds remaining in this basketball game. 11 points in the ball game for Kojak Bellegrito, but these are all important free throws that they dialing need, especially with Dre Guevara down on the floor. 11 points in the game for Kojak. We are tied at 91 as Kojak delivers the second flying V free throw. Coach Glenn Camacho will sue for time. Tied at 91 apiece. 103 remaining on the clock. Do join us back. This is the 2008 Philippine Collegiate Championships. For the 13th time at 91 apiece, it will be lucky 13 for one team and very unlucky for the other. Magu Marjan together with Coach Ronnie Maxana at the arena in San Juan Barroca. Almost losing the runner, does so. Here comes the left front Knights. And they will set up their attack. The then Sean, smart move, giving it over to Kojak Medegrino. 45 seconds remaining. Hazul. Over to Belenchon, he came into a place, Guevara. Rani says to Belenchon, thinking three drives closer. Belenchon all the way, no! Cuts him short! But Belenchon picks up his own rebound. 30 seconds remaining. Azul trying to calm down the rest of the Knights. Everybody up on their feet at the arena. Azul against Fernandez, eight on the shot clock. Azul kicks it over. Belenchon by three, that's it! Wow, a defensive stop on the other end. And a big time three point basket on the left side of the floor. The 16 point version for the day. 48 out of the 94 points, courtesy of the penetrate and kick by Hasul. Beautiful KFC replay, and that shoves the Knights up by 3, 94 to 91. FEU now will have 15.1 seconds remaining to try and tie this ball game. Do they have to go for the three now, or is it safe to still go for the two? The best shooters for FU today are Kamalini and Benedict Fernandez. But here, Coach Glenn Capasha calling his last time out. Oh, and it looks like they are setting up for either a corner three or straightaway three, Coach Rani. Yeah, I'm sure they're taking, but it's not going to look like big two and give up. So, an initial foul, 15.1 seconds left. Time is not a highlight. That was a crucial defensive stop forced by Letran against Barroca on the previous play. So Kojak Malagrito making up for that missed free throw. He split his charities to tie the ball game, but knocked in a huge three to give him a three-point lead. It is Benedict Fernandez with Mark Baraka, Real Cervantes, J.R. Kawaling, and Mark Barakal on the offense for the Tamaraos. And you mentioned Kawaling, you got Barakal, and you got Baraka. Even Fernandez, another gunner that can hit it from the outside. Malagrito together with Cortez. Ramises, yes. shot and Azul on the defensive side. Baragal against Ramises. Are they going to force the three? Baragal launches, misses Barroca for the twos, and now FBU has got the foul with only six seconds remaining. LeBron just has to get an inbound. LeBron in trouble, nowhere to go. And Azul will lose it, but last touch will be whistled on FBU. Coach Lui will be calling his final timeout. Coach Glenn Capacho pleading his case that that ball should have been awarded in their favor. 6.1, 4.5 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. 94 to 93. 
all the drugs gotta do now is get the ball inbound and the FEU will definitely be forced to commit a, another a foul. Yes. Free throw shooters will have to step up here for Coach Louis Alas. So Coach Louis on the drawing board. Is this the time to start to send in your best free throw shooters on the floor? But remember Maguna, who's name personal and Coach Louis along the sidelines. He will have to keep his trust on the players right now. We're healthy on the floor for him. Coach Louis drawing up in this play as we take a look at the KFC replay. This was the last sequence. Ball tapped out of bounds. Coach Glenn Capacho pleading to the referees, but ball will go. Will remain with the time. So the five on the floor for FEU remains the same. They need to get the ball inbounds because this is already Coach Louis' last time out. But they got a team out of the And both teams not having any more timeouts. Coach Louis, alas, 4.5 seconds away from taking the run to the final four for the first time in the history. While well, FEU still has 4.5 seconds left to turn this game around and rescue themselves from the jaws. So good they beat. So Gutelban checks in for Cortez. Better free throw shooter. Vanisas will inbound. They got four shooters trying to catch. Where do they go? Pellegrino pops out. Pellegrino trying to take his throw to the hole. And the left front will dribble away the time. And the left front makes boards into the final four of the 2008 Philippine Collegiate Championships. Pellegrino showed up. And he was able to elude. Barocca was trying to call him. They wisely dribbled the time away. And the grant surviving the loss of three great personals down the stretch built on the heroics. And the smallest guy on the floor for them here today, Koja Melegrito. 94 to 93 is the final. Lebron advances to take on the mighty Antonio Blue Eagles. In the final four for the first time in their history. The plan will meet Adenay in the final four, while on the other side of the bracket, Massa will be awaiting the victor of San Beda versus Arellano later on. So 94 to 93, once again, the final. The final four will be played this coming Saturday, while the finals is on Monday afternoon at the Big Dome. LeBron with a huge win against the FEU Tamaraos. Coach Ronnie, grabbing matchup na mangyayari. Another UAB <laughs> NC in the Final Four. Of course, no team outside the UAB teams have won the title here in the five years that we have seen the Philippine Collegiate Championships. This is the sixth year of the PCC. UE has won twice, FEU has won twice, Ateneo has won once, which was last year. That's why this year the hope of the NCAA and the other teams in the other leagues is to get that title finally. And uh, court side, our counterpart, Sharon Yu, is with our best player of this game. Yes, I am being joined right now by Coach Jack Pellegrino. Congratulations now. For those who don't know, Sayun did make the free throw at the crucial seconds of the game. What were you thinking? You know, Coach Louis was telling you, deny Barocca, deny Barocca. And you were even able to make the free throws. And you were even executing good defense. What was your, what was on your mind? Uh, sa akin, ano, uh, binig sinunod ko lang yung instruction ni Coach. Uh, kung susunod ko yun, talagang mananalo kami. So, yun yun, nangyari yan. <laughs> okay, so, next up, Ateneo, are you excited to face up to them? Uh, siyempre excited. Lahat naman tayo mag-excite sa laro na yun. So, kailangan, ano pa namin, tinan pa namin depensa namin para makakontinue namin yun, know, para uh, win it na reason. Congratulations, Kojak Melagrito. Congratulations. Go ahead, celebrate with your team. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Sharon. Of course, Kojak Melagrito mocking home the final four points of the game for Lebron to give him this cushion. And let's take a look at the, the bracket as it progressed, uh, Coach Ronnie. From 250 teams to the Sweet 16 to the Elite 8, now we have Ateneo versus Letran on one side of the bracket in the Final Four, while of course on the other group, Net De La Salle, just waiting the winner between San, San Beda 
and Arellano here in the final game of our Elite Eight. And that will be coming right up for everybody. Next game, the Sun Meta Red Lions take on the Chiefs of Arellano in behalf of my partner, Coach Ronnie Maxano, and our courtside reporter, Shadow New. My name is Magu Marjan, thanking everybody for keeping it locked in. This is the 2008 Philippine Collegiate Championships, leaving you with that beautiful shot from Melegrito.